Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1976 horror film, The Omen. Now, The Omen is uh, directed by Richard Donner, and this was his big break, because prior to this, he did a lot of films that didn't really do anything. He did mostly television, and he got this uh, film because of his connection with the head of Fox, Alan Ladd. Uh, Alan Ladd, I think it was Alan Ladd Jr. Alan Ladd, he was a guy who was friends with Richard Donner. They they knew each other uh, pretty well. And Richard Donner came across the script for The Omen, which it wasn't called The Omen at that time. It was called uh, either The Birthmark or The Antichrist because the concept of the film was initially... Uh, considered and, and configured by a religious advisor uh, named uh, Robert uh, Munger. He was the first to suggest making a film about the Antichrist. He pitched the idea to the producer Harvey Bernhard, who then wrote a 10-page treatment. This 10-page treatment was picked up by Warner Brothers initially, and Warner Brothers is going to do the movie. And they even uh, had a different director that they had already picked. They picked a director named Charles Bale. And what happened was, even after doing a bunch of location scouting, spending money on pre-production, the studio, because of the fact that Exorcist 2 was going over budget, they started slashing uh, uh, the available budget for... Uh, the birthmark uh, by a considerable margin. It's just as each day went by, the budget got tighter and tighter, and it got to the point where the director and pretty much everyone else involved with the movie was like, well, we can't do this film with a budget this small, which is interesting because the movie itself wound up being made by Fox for a pretty small budget at the time. Uh, it was like two and a half million dollars. And I believe that was close to what uh, 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 the budget was going to be for the Warner Brothers uh, version of the movie. But I think it was a little bit less. So they, they didn't have as much to work with as they ultimately did with Fox. But yeah, it just got uh, shelved as a result. Because everyone involved with it was like, we don't want to do it if we're going to have to deal with a budget this tight. And the project was then put into turnaround. And that's how it wound up in the hands of Richard Donner. And he really liked the script. He met up with Alan Ladd. And they they also expressed uh, a lot of uh, genuine interest in the screenplay. And what's funny is Fox already turned down the film and so did every other major studio at the time because despite the fact that the exorcist was this massive smash hit uh it was still a genre that was still kind of uh let's just say something that a lot of studios were not really necessarily wanting to put their full faith in yet so that's definitely a, a bit of context that that makes this film a little bit more special in retrospect because it definitely did help make the horror genre into something that was an a list genre for studios and also for uh other uh potential actors or actresses to to join these projects or more well-known directors and so, yeah, it was Richard Donner and his passion for this script, which it honestly is the reason why this film got made. And his passion for it is also why uh, Alan Ladd took a chance on Donner and championed for him and handpicked him to direct the film when it ultimately went to Fox. Now, there was also a couple other directors that were considered at one point. 
Curtis Harrington, I guess, was set to direct the movie, but there were some studio politics going on, and that led to the film getting taken away from him. I don't know how accurate that is. Uh, Mike Hodges, who actually was hired to direct The Omen 2, he was an, offered the film, but he turned it down. Richard Donner was fated to be the, the man behind the camera at the end of the day, and he got the job. And he's the reason why the film is much more of a supernatural thriller and not really a straightforward horror film. He mentioned how he wanted all of the supernatural occurrences in the film to be something that could potentially happen in, in real life. And I think this is also why you focus on the, the family drama and, and, you know, the marital uh, strife and, and stuff like that. And I understand that thought process. And I think in a lot of ways that did make the film, um, more of a classy bit of horror in comparison to what some of the horror films were around this time that weren't the exorcist. And that's really what appealed to, uh, some of the, the film's eventual stars is this, this more thoughtful, more, uh, subtle approach to, uh, the horror. I think Donner did a, a admirable and a genuinely amazing job directing the film, especially for a guy who had a lot of pressure. Like this is a, this is a pressure cooker for, for Richard, because you could argue that this was his last shot. If he didn't make this work, he was done. He even said things like, well, if this doesn't work out, I'm, I, I'm just going to have to go back to television. And so there was a lot riding on this and Donner was still willing to take a lot of risks and, and take chances when it comes to the direction. I mean, the decapitation scene with David Warner, uh, he shot that with five different cameras. He shot it with every camera that they could find. And that's the kind of dedication to the project that just makes Donner such a great talent as a director that he's willing to go that extra step and go that extra mile in order to make the film have that wow factor or, or make a, a certain scene stand out more. And Donner was also very much involved when it comes to the casting of the cast members. He was the one that ultimately found uh, the kid, Harvey, who played uh, young Damien. He asked all these kids to essentially attack him in the audition. And Harvey was the only kid that went all out and, and even kicked him in the nuts. And he was like, dye that kid's hair black. That's Damien. And that was after a long struggle of trying to find the right actor for that role because it was so hard for, for Donner to find the right kid to play Damien that he honestly considered changing the gender of uh, the character. He was like, uh, you know, I, I can't find this, this boy. Uh, I might have to change uh, the, the gender of, of this, this character, make it Danielle or something. But, Ultimately, he found his his Damien. And Donner, I just feel that the way that he was able to think on his feet was just so impressive when it comes to this movie. For instance, the, the well-known uh, sequence with Lee Remick um, where she is supposed to fall off this balcony or this banister of, of some kind. And she's supposed to fall to the ground below. That was done with an optical illusion that was shot, um, live. 
and how Donner did it is honestly really, really cool. It, he set up a wall and made it look like the floor and then shot things in a way where he would have Lee essentially throw herself up against the wall, which is set up to look like the floor. And then he would use camera tricks to make it look like she fell and hit the floor. And it's an effect that's still very effective to this day. And it's just a prime example of just how good Donner's direction is in this movie. Did a great job shooting the various different scenes that involved uh, the uh, horrific deaths in the film, as well as scenes that are just trying to establish a certain mood or an atmosphere. And a lot of scenes in the film have a lot of tension, not just when it comes to the story, but also when it comes to the way that they're shot. And it's just a really well shot and well directed film. And I think a lot of people pointed out that it's very classy, like it looks uh, very refined. And that is very, very true. Like Donner really did a, a, a remarkable job in terms of making this kind of low budget horror film into something that look like, looks like it's an A-list movie. And the screenplay by David Seltzer this is a script that even the writer himself isn't completely happy with. Like if you see interviews with David Seltzer, he's, he, he essentially talks about the script and he's kind of derogatory about it. And I don't think that it's as bad as he's making it out to be, but I do agree with him in, in some uh, capacity that it's Donner's direction. It's the performances by the cast it's the score by Jerry Goldsmith. It's these other elements that really elevate the script and make the film into something better than average at the very least. And the screenplay, it's got more flaws when it comes to other uh, aspects or, or other parts of the film. Uh, and it's not for a lack of trying. I mean, Seltzer put a lot into the screenplay. He was also a relatively new uh, uh, kind of talent in the field. Like he had done some documentary stuff. He had done some work with, with a few other people, but he hadn't really written a lot of screenplays. But this was also at a time period where studios and producers in particular, because this film really was uh, uh, a movie that was bankrolled by by Harvey Bernhard Bernhard he gave Seltzer all the time that he needed to write this script it took up to a year to write this screenplay and that allowed Seltzer to do so much extra research when it comes to the Bible and revelations and everything and that really helped uh, make the the film more authentic and 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 make the elements involving the 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 devil and satan and and the antichrist all the more compelling my issue with this script is that it starts off really strong with uh thorn finding out that his child is dead and he's given what seems to be like a blessing, which is this newborn baby that's available to be given to him by this church. And he can just act like that's, that's his son and everything went fine and nothing went wrong. And he can save his wife from the turmoil of, of, of knowing that, she she lost her son and so just the idea and the concept of a father lying about 
his son and not telling the wife or the mother about what happened to uh their baby and 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 to just set up this random baby as if it was their own is some genuinely interesting uh bit of of uh drama and to set that up around the idea that this baby is actually the the child of 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 the devil makes it all the more um compelling and captivating and i love the build up of the movie it's definitely a slow burn and and i think it does a really good job and when it comes to the story building things up showing the mysterious elements of 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 the child damien and having this this random priest show up and start uh spreading dire warnings and trying to get through to uh uh thorn and to, and to tell him that you know damien uh, he's he's the child of 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 satan you know he was born of a of a jackal and it just really does a good job just creating this bit of underlying tension and then you bring in this photographer who is taking all these photos of various different people that are involved with Robert and his wife, Catherine, and this photographer, Keith Jennings, he starts seeing mysterious things in the photos. And of course that happens after the, the, the film shocks you with the suicide scene where the the housekeeper goes up on top of the roof and is all like it's all for you damien and then she jumps off and hangs herself uh and that is just a really striking scene and it works so well because there's such a good build up to that scene and it genuinely is shocking and I got to give the writer a lot of credit for that. And I also got to give uh, Donner a lot of credit for that because of the way that he shot that scene, you didn't necessarily know that she was going to hang herself. You just saw her up there and it was sh shot in a way where it's so up close and you don't quite get exactly what's going on. And then you get this wide shot and she drops down and it was Donner's idea that her body would drop down and then smash the window that wasn't actually in the script so Donner that's another instance of Donner just thinking on his feet and just making the film so much better as a result and yeah just those those aspects of the film are still very striking when it comes to the story just any scene involving this supposed accidental or a coincidental death like the priest and he gets uh impaled by the lightning rod and how it seems like it's foretold in the photographs the uh photographer himself seeing his fate when he takes a photo of himself in a mirror and then ultimately that fate does come to uh fatal fruition when the plate of glass slides out of the truck and decapitates him and the stuff with uh uh the 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 wife and and the mother oh well she thinks she's the mother but at a certain point she definitely starts to doubt what's going on with this kid and whether or not she actually she actually is the mother of this child and so you've got Catherine and there's all, all these things that are being said about her, that she's going to lose her unborn child in an accident, and then she's ultimately going to die. And so the script does a good job in terms of working with fate and combining it with coincidence and making you kind of doubt that it's necessarily for sure the work of Satan. And... That's also something that Donner really emphasized because 
he wanted it to be more of a mystery and honestly he wanted it to be more of a tale of a family going insane and that it's not even necessarily something where what Robert finds at the end when he sees the 666 on Damien's uh, uh, scalp that isn't necessarily intended to be something that is real. It's a delusion. And Robert has uh, uh, gone off the deep end. And Donner was talking about how that's the only way to really make the idea of him being willing to kill a child work is that he he lost his mind in the end and the original ending was going to be different it was going to have uh not only uh robert die but also damien and i think that's interesting but i prefer the idea that it's supernatural and and because of that it makes some parts of this script just kind of a letdown and for instance, there's a lot of emphasis on these dogs as being these disciples or, or these uh, uh, harbingers of uh, doom and death. And uh, yeah, they're like disciples of the devil. And I thought that was just kind of a letdown that they just kept going back to that, that it's just more dogs. Like I, and Apparently, that wasn't what the screenwriter intended. That was more of something that Donner wanted. And it's also something that they just had to deal with. Because apparently Donner wanted a different kind of dog for uh, uh, the film. He didn't want the Rottweilers. He wanted German Shepherds. But because of the fact that they were shooting in the UK, there are certain uh, uh, legal issues and legalities that were uh, preventing Donner and the crew from bringing in German shepherds. So they just had to deal with whichever dogs that were available and the dogs that were available happened to be Rottweilers. But I do admit that the dogs just showing up throughout the movie, like at a certain point it got old to me and uh, I, I feel that it wasn't really that scary or that intense anymore. Just seeing another Rottweiler show up. Also, the stuff with uh, the the maid, the housekeeper, uh, Miss Blaylock. Initially, the character was written to be much more gregarious, much more ambiguous in terms of her being a uh, protector of, of uh, the Antichrist. But when uh, uh, Billy Whitelaw was cast, she decided to change things and make the character her own. And it was her idea to make the character more openly evil. And even Donner wasn't necessarily 100% on board with that. And neither was a screenwriter. But because Whitelaw was so good in the role, they just gave it a pass. I think that was a mistake. I think they should have just told Whitelaw, hey, I understand you have this idea, but we want you to play it this way. And that way, when you have your turn, when you are revealed to be this evil uh, protector of the devil's son, it's so much more effective. And I agree with that. I think that the fact that she was just openly evil and, and just untrustworthy just really killed any of the suspense or tension involving that character. Uh, I, I do appreciate that she kept like pushing the boundaries in terms of what she was able to do throughout the story, but it still didn't make up the fact that it was so obvious that she was just not someone to put your faith in. If you want to, if you want to survive, unless you're the, the antichrist. So I think that was a problem. I also feel the screenplay didn't do the best job establishing the strength of the relationship between, uh, uh, Robert Thorne and his wife, Catherine. It has a bit of, of that early on, but it wasn't 
it wasn't written and it wasn't set up in a way that really made it resonate that strongly for me. So I feel that when you start to see the strife between the two, it's not something that really has as much emotional impact because I didn't really necessarily buy that they were this really lovely couple who was madly in love with one another and could not be uh, separated. And it just made a lot of the stuff involving the kid and how the kid is putting them apart just not as effective to me. And it kind of made the film dull and, and caused it to be a bit too dead in the middle because there's a good chunk of the script and the story that was focusing on that. And I just didn't buy that. And I feel that in all honesty, if you're going to do that, you got to do a better job making me buy this, this, uh, couple. And if you're not doing that, then emphasize different elements of the script. Like I think emphasizing more of Keith Jennings and his character and fleshing his character out more and having him uh, start to work with uh, Robert Thorne and investigating the the mystery behind Damien's real mother earlier on in the film or getting to know the the, the disgraced uh, priest a little bit more or uh, Bugenhagen. Or, you know, stuff like that. I I think that definitely would have been more effective than, in my opinion, pretty boring uh, 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 family drama and and, and, and familial strife. I will will give the writer this, though. I mean, the scene where Damien is just being an annoying little shit and just going, Mia, 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 and with, with the pool balls on the pool table and uh catherine is just sitting there in the chair and just just beside herself and can't stand this little shit that was that was that was good because i definitely did relate to that because i'm like yeah that kid it doesn't even have to be the devil's son Uh, that is just awful and so i that's like the one time i really felt for her other than that i don't think the script did the best job making me really sympathize with her or uh, uh, Robert. And yeah, it just feels like the story just picks up more when the photographer is more involved and they start this investigation in terms of who the mother of Damien is. And then I like that aspect of the script, but it's fleeting. Like it's not that long. It doesn't make up for a, 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 a large chunk of the film. And then you get to the finale, which I don't know. I think it could have used a little bit more. There's a deleted scene that I actually think should have been put back in the film where uh, Robert actually gets to take out one of the dogs. Like the dogs have been tormenting him and have been a problem for the entire movie. And that's a nice crowd pleasing moment where the dog is trying to break through the window of the car, trying to get at him and he stabs it in the head with a screwdriver. But that got cut out because I guess Donner felt that the scene was unnecessary. I disagree. Um, it just builds up to this final confrontation with White Law's character, uh, Miss Blaylock, and it's set up well, but because of the fact that I know that she's not to be trusted and I know that she's, uh, you know, she's on the side of the devil, like it's not really something that's that shocking. And then you get to the ending of the film and I know Donner's initial idea was to kill the kid and good would prevail and whatever, or it would have this ambiguous ending that, oh, maybe he wasn't really the Antichrist. But for me, it was always going to be something where he was never going to be able to get away with killing the kid because the MPA at the time and audiences at the time would not allow that to, to happen. And so it just makes the the finale kind of fall a little flat because you know where it's going. Like, you know that he's not going to succeed. He's not going to kill the kid. And it honestly, it does. It feels like once David Warner's character is out of the picture and the mystery is revealed in terms of who the, the real mother is of Damien and what actually happened to Robert's real son, 
you get to oh is he going to kill the kid or is he not and you know he's not going to so it just it just kind of fizzles out a little bit uh by the end apparently the ending of the movie with damien turning around smiling at the camera that was something that was added after the the film was initially completed because the producer thought that you know that would have been a better way for it to end with evil winning and it turned out to definitely be the better choice because it enabled the film to to you know open itself up for more more uh movies and also i think that was a more, more of a crowd pleasing moment but yeah it's just one of those films where it's a movie that has some really great moments like the safari park scene uh the 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 sequence uh with uh, David Warner and him getting decapitated pretty much any scene involving a mysterious death and and some of the other scenes are just kind of building up the suspense and building up the tension but i do admit i think it's a little bit too slow at times and i think there there are some moments where the story and the script is a little bit too talky for my taste I don't need to hear Robert Thorne say he say that he loves his wife over and over again. It doesn't help that I, I don't buy it anyway, so it just comes across like it's almost a parody. Like, oh, okay, or, yeah, I get it. Um, the cast, I feel, is really solid. I mean, Gregory Peck, I personally would have liked to have seen Sean Connery in that role. He, he brings a certain intensity that I don't think Peck really is capable of. I know initially uh, there was a different actor cast. Apparently it was Charles Bronson, but he was uh, ultimately replaced by Peck. Um, there were other uh, actors that were considered, like uh, uh, Oliver Reed was considered at one point, Charlton Heston, Roy Scheider, Dick Van Dyke, William Holden, who would go on to actually be... Uh, uh, Robert's uh, brother in uh, Damien Omen 2. But Peck, he did bring a certain uh, gravitas to the to the role once he settled in that I that I did appreciate. I just didn't buy the the connection between him and him and Lee Remick. Uh, but when he is starting to believe in 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 the prophecy and he's starting to believe that Damien is the devil's son and he's working alongside David Warner that's when his performance really kicks into high gear and it becomes a really good performance but i think that it's a bit uneven because it takes a while for him to settle in and that's actually what happened with the film itself he was uncomfortable with the source, with the with the subject material he wasn't necessarily uh, in his comfort zone with a lot of elements in the movie. He also hadn't acted in a long time. So he was just kind of uh, starting to to settle in. And it took him a bit longer. And But once he did, he was a true professional. And he was really good. Uh, but I personally would have liked to have seen someone like Sean Connery. But that's just me. Uh but Peck being involved really was something groundbreaking for the horror genre because no one of his stature had really done a horror film. That really wasn't a genre that these actors took part in. Uh, Lee Remick, I felt she was fine too. I, I feel the script kind of dropped the ball in terms of making her character stronger. But what she was asked to do, she did a good job with it. David Warner, to me, though, is the best performer. I loved his scenes. You could tell that he was having fun with the role. I wish he was in the movie more. That's that's uh, honestly a bit of a letdown because that character was so strong and that performance was so good. Billy Whitelaw was creepy, but it was kind of a one-note performance. Um, I would have liked to see her try to effectively showcase some kind of Mary Poppins vibes or pull the wool over your eyes and make you think that maybe she just means well and she's not actually this evil uh kind of succubus type of character 
uh, the boy, uh, Harvey Stevens, who played Damien, for a young child actor and for a role this difficult, he did a really good job playing this devilish kid. And Patrick Troughton, he also did some good work. His father, Brendan, who's this disgraced uh, priest who's also on... Uh, it's high on uh, all kinds of uh, drugs and stuff like that. And Leo McKern was good in the little role that he had as Carl Bugenhagen, uh, the uncredited role. So, yeah, it was a solid cast. It had some good cinematography by Gilbert Taylor. The, the editing was really tout and really terrific by Stuart Baird. Stuart Baird. And the score by Jerry Goldsmith was just spectacular and grand and all kinds of great like the score is really I, I mean the score makes the film without the score i i don't really feel this movie would be as well renowned or as well regarded as as it is by so many people and another thing that i really liked about the film is it's advertising like the marketing for this film is a huge reason why this film was such a massive success for the studio it was a brilliant advertising campaign. And it was another thing that Richard Donner was responsible for because the original advertising campaign, they had a different poster and Donner wasn't a fan of it. He didn't like it. And I believe it was Donner. I, I might've been Bernhard, the producer, but either way, they were somebody who was pretty high up when it comes to the production of the film did not like the advertising campaign. And so they went to the the higher ups and were like, hey, we got to do something different because this this isn't going to work. And they're like, OK, well, what do you suggest? And so they hired a different person from the outside. And that person came up with this really classy, cool, eerie poster, the, the, the tagline, you have been warned. And they continued that when it comes to the advertising. Uh, there was a special sneak preview of the film. And the sneak preview audience, as soon as they left the theater, they saw these posters that were made specifically for this event and they were put up on the walls and it said, it is the sixth month and the sixth day of 1976. You have been warned. And I was like, and that's really good advertising. And the audience was, was just shocked and spooked by that. And they also uh, hyped up the film with all these discussions about mysterious uh, occurrences and unexplained events that happened and deaths and, and accidents uh, during production of the film. And then you even had a poster that came out that was continuing to just create the buildup and set it up to a fever pitch just to create this just massive anticipation for this film where you had this poster that said, uh, I, I think it was like, is one day closer to the end of the world, the omen coming soon. Like it was just a really great advertising campaign. And it's a huge reason why it was such a smash hit. I don't think it would have done anywhere near as well if it wasn't for that advertising campaign. So I think The Omen is a prime example of the power of a good advertising campaign. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on The Omen. I uh, hope you enjoyed the review. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.